Hey guys, Ahmed here and in this video I will be sharing with you 5 plugins I believe will let you create much more scalable design systems and let you also design much more accessible products. We are going to begin with the design system part of the tutorial and I will see you in the next video. The first plugin we are going to talk about is called Icon Resizer. It basically lets you resize your icons in batch instead of individual and it's going to save you a lot of time if you have a large icon set for your projects. Now if you want to install it, it's the top icon here and here is how it works. So let's say you have your icon set planned and probably for a production level design you will have more than these I believe dozens icons you will have a hundred or two hundred and you realize you actually need to change their sizes because you find out that it might be too small or too big but you don't want to go individually and change size that's gonna take hours so what you are gonna do is you actually select the top icon you have here and while holding shift you are going to select the bottom and this lets you mass select on Figma then what you can do is I'm gonna press command slash to find my shortcut for the plugin icon resizer and here I can actually change the sizes there are two options one is the maximum width and height that the icon itself will scale to and the second is the determinant box size that all icons ha should have for your icon set because it will make it easier for them to be aligned with text or other stuff so let's say instead of 32 we are gonna pick 16 to 24 or 14 to 24 and let's run it and boom they are all resized immediately second plugin for your design system is called type scale and it's the third icon from the top here with this let's say logo and how it's used is i'm gonna show you basically let's say we have a frame here and let's say we have a base text which is like this is paragraph and let's get this to be 14 pixels okay let's say this is for mobile and that inter is good and I am just going to zoom in a bit and I'm gonna make this normal okay and what we want to do is basically create a type system based on this paragraph font but we don't want to go to like the quick size websites and leave Figma because it's a wastes our time we do a context switch we want to do everything here that's where the plugin will come in you are gonna press command slash and basically type scale and once you click on it you will be able to have a few choices the first one is that you are gonna pick your scale meaning at what kind of a ratio should you scale up or down and let's say let's we let's say we pick 1.5 and then how many sizes do you want basically above this paragraph size like header one header two header three and the right side is how many sizes do you want below like span elements that are usually smaller than paragraphs so let's say we have like one span element and we have like three top sizes and let's create this and I want I don't want the content to be I don't want the generated content to be this one I want this to be like what we have and let's go and we want to run to the nearest whole pixel that's for sure and yeah I don't think it did it right let's do it again oh yeah it did it's just it doesn't put them in the uh, what would you say the correct spaces sometimes my bad oh, this is hard okay Let's move this here, let's close this and let's basically get these out. So uh, it's going to be like these four and let's move them here and around here, yes. So now that they are in and we have their sizes, they are all written for us and that looks pretty good. This lets you easily create your type system for the project you are going to work on. And the nice touch is that their sizes are all there for pixel but also for RAM. So your devs will understand what they have to code as well. So that is nice. So the third plugin is called Color Designer and it has this logo on the left side here. And what it does is it lets you create your color styles on Figma very fast. 
So I'm gonna show you how it helps with that. Let's say we are here and we have this base color that we are gonna use this base purple color. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna press command slash for let's say color and then we are gonna go color designer. What you have now is this window. Default section is the selected layers. We want this purple to be set and sometimes this one bugs out a bit, see, and yes, now it got it. Sometimes it bugs out. You want this to be selected layer so you can give it the base color and it gives you the shades for you. And you can pick how many shades of this color you want. Let's say we pick 10 and then you can create your different ellipses like this and basically have it like copy this color and then put it there and then you can move and then go to the third one, copy, and then move it there, etc, etc. This lets you pick your shades very much more faster instead of just going opening your color scheme HSP and then tinkering around. For beginner designers, I recommend to actually do that color wheel to pick on your own before using this plugin. You really want to learn how to pick your colors and it helps. But if you already know how to pick your colors, this can be a good tool for you. Or if you are a web designer or a programmer and you don't know how color works, you might use this tool. But if you want to learn how to use color better on Figma to create color styles, please click on that video above. I have created a video for this and it would help you a lot. So the first accessibility tool we are going to review is called Stark and this is how its logo looks and this is where you install it. So how it's going to be used is let's say you have a header and you have this frame and you have this text and it's this reddish color. And what you are wondering is if this kind of a color contrast between the white background and this reddish forefront actually is enough contrast for web standards of legibility for the normal user. So what you do is you press command slash and you open the Stark and you press the contrast option. And then it tells you your, if you meet the criteria and on, you have basically two columns. The left side is the normal text and the right side is a large text. You can think of normal text as your paragraph and you can think of your large text as your headers. So if we are having a large text, which we have here, we kind of meet the requirement minimum, but we don't get a AAA, which is like a good number you want to stand on. But if this was a paragraph, we don't meet at all, meaning that you would literally need to change it to meet the minimum standards for the legibility on the map. So if you also subscribe, you can see the suggestions and apply them automatically. But if you don't want to subscribe, you can just play with the color here, darken it a bit and open and close the plugin again to see if it works. It's going to take a bit more time, but you can find a good cont contrast ratio. So the second plugin for the accessibility on Figma is called Able and it's the top third from this table and its logo is like this. And here is how it works. So let's say you have this kind of header and this and you have this background and you are gonna select your background here and it's very important because AL doesn't let you select text between frames you kind of have to create your rec shape rectangle and then select the header match its color so let's do command slash again and able the one thing different about able than Stark is while it's a bit harder to use on my opinion it lets you pick the color blindness types so that you can see what a user with no green in their peripheral vision sees. So it would be like this. Or a user with, let's say, low color sees it like this. So you can get a better understanding on making empathy and if it works or not for that particular user much easier. I believe this also exists on Stark, but it's for the pro version. So this helps a lot because it's free and you get to make empathy with people who are suffering from color blindness. All right, this is your surprise plugin for Figma and it's for responsive design. I just wanted to give you something extra for this tutorial. So what's the plugin is called is breakpoints. And it's the top one from here and you can see its logo right there. 
and how it's used is if you want to make responsive web designs especially on figma this is the plugin i would recommend it has a two week free trial and after that it's only one time fee of 18 dollars for a single user and i think it's bargain now i don't do a lot of web design work which is why i haven't paid for it and they are not sponsoring me to say this but this is pretty amazing so what you do is let's say you have your desktop tablet and mobile screens and you want to see how they would look on a web but you want to check on figma so what you do is you are gonna press command slash and you are gonna pick breakpoint and then it's going to come here i'm gonna say continue and i'm gonna press new adaptive layout now this is where the magic will happen now on the on the small card here the right side here is for the width and the bottom left here is for the height now we want the height to be, I believe, roughly, let's say, 812 pixels for all. So 812. And then we are going to pick our breakpoints where we want to switch between desktop to tablet and then tablet to mobile. So I'm going to add a bit here and one more. And the desktop will be 1414. And my tablet will be, I believe, around maybe... 768 that's a general frame for the you know tablet and for mobile 448 is a stop then for these pluses you see is we are gonna say so we are gonna press the plus so we are going to pick our desktop between 1440 to 768 so i'm just gonna press it here and that's a check mark and then i'm gonna pick the middle part and we are gonna pick the tablet boom and then I'm going to pick it again. We are going to pick the mobile. Fantastic. Then we have this and we want to get this to be 812. And now we can actually scale it up and down and see how this works. Now, it's scaling well, but it's scaling well because I also know how to work with Figma constraints and auto layouts. I still had to do the design work where we would use several Figma properties to make sure these would scale down or up pretty easily. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, please click on that video above where I show you how to do this in an in-depth tutorial so that you can create more responsive designs. I hope this plugin will help you guys a lot. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. It's been a great pleasure. And if you haven't already, please click on that subscribe button below. If you do, you will get a notification every time I release a video that will help you become a better UI UX designer, whether that is by improving your Figma skills or your design skills and take care. Now, before you go any further, I actually added two videos to the end of this video that I believe will help make you a better UI UX designer on Figma. Please watch either of them if you haven't already. I believe they will improve your design skills a lot.